Good afternoon. Welcome back from lunch. You are about to hear Robert Nissenbaum. Got it. All right. Robert has been involved in content creation for the web for close to 20 years. His views on content marketing and search engine optimization are against the mainstream, including his belief that keyword research is mostly unnecessary. He's, he's right, by the way. In, at least in my opinion. Over the past several years, he's been testing his ideas on SEO and what it takes to, to rank by looking at the goal behind Google's algorithm and how we search and consume content. If he's not behind a computer screen, you'll find him pushing his limits as an avid sea kayaker. Please join me in welcoming again, Robert Small. So the first piece of all this is I am not a developer in the slightest sense. As far as I'm concerned, Gutenberg is really all the arguments happening about it really don't impact me as opposed to whether it'll just simply be functional or not. What I've been trying to figure out, which I haven't been able to come up with a real answer that actually sits well with me, and it goes to my understanding of everything and how we move forward with content and search engine optimization, is why we have Gutenberg in the first place. And most of those arguments tend to center around Wix, Weebly, Squarespace, and being easier for the average person to be able to create web content. On one level, I get it. On the other level, I don't, and primarily because we have more than enough capable editing systems now. There are more than enough plugins that give us the ability to manipulate content the way we want it to do. Beaver Builder, Elementor, simple enough. And quite honestly, in my opinion, it would seem to make sense to be easy enough to create something like that as a new editor if that's all we were after and make it part of WordPress as it is without tearing everything down to the core, creating all of these potential accessibility issues, breaking backwards compatibility in a host of different ways, and creating all kinds of other problems in the ecosystem. And while Matt even last week at closing remarks for WordCamp Portland was talking about the new Gutenberg editor, for me it goes much beyond that. Again, other than breaking the system, he stated very clearly that we've pushed off other projects for Gutenberg. This has been happening over a long period of time. There are bigger issues in my mind when it comes to WordPress and the big one being security. It would make sense to address that before we worry about an editing system that takes up a whole of everything else. There's a potential now for updates to be pushed every two weeks to the core once we release 5.0. And this is coming from Matt himself last week, to which you get the obvious Microsoft reference. So I sat down and tried to figure out, after all this reading, why Gutenberg? The simplest piece for me as a content creator, how we will consume content, how we currently consume content, is changing. Okay? This goes both to the methods we use, Facebook, Twitter, social media in general, and it goes to the type of devices, mobile being the big one. Stone Temple Consultant, big name when it comes to search engine optimization. Their study lab that was published at the beginning of this year looking at visits to websites in the US between 2016 and 2017. 1.9 trillion vi web visits in 2016, 2 trillion in 2017, so we're running a fairly statistically compatible number here. Only a 6% change in how content is being accessed, increasing on mobile, decreasing on desktop. But the prediction was also that by the end of this year, it's not unlikely to think that two-thirds of all content being consumed will be done on mobile devices. And the other two pieces that come out of this right now, um, just read this, the percent on, on time on site for mobile devices during this period of time went from 40 to 49 percent. We're staying on sites via mobile devices far longer. Mobile bounce rate has dropped from 52 to 47 percent. There is clearly this need to pay attention to mobile devices. AMP, mobile site speed becoming an actual ranking factor for Google. But it goes beyond this piece of it, that we will continue to consume content in different ways, and it's not limited to mobile. Virtual reality, 
heads-up displays in cars, smart appliances. And it stands to reason at that point that if the way we consume content changes, the way we publish content has to change. And it really gets in the heart for me of what WordPress was. It's a content management system. It was a way for everybody to be able to publish content on the web. You think about mobile devices and the use. If we didn't shift to mobile responsiveness, we weren't going to show in searches, most likely. And that's not the first time we've had this change in how we publish content. When smartphones first came out, and we were starting to do more and more searches on these, we built mobile versions, M dot versions of websites, so that we would show based on the way we're consuming content. The biggest piece at that point, however, was that we're doing this at a domain or the site level. We've gone beyond that. We now have to change how we're bringing up content deeper. We have to have content now at its base level and changing it. So it's like going from publishing hard covers to soft covers, but now we also have to change from, large, from small print to large print. And even some of the content, the way we present the content has to change to fit the new way we're publishing. Gutenberg is far more than a major shift in just creating and editing. It, for me, is our publisher now. I almost see that Gutenberg is the evolution of WordPress as, it's set, as a whole. And Matt was asked last week if we'll still call Gutenberg Gutenberg in the years to come. I almost think Gutenberg is essentially going to just be WordPress. This Gutenberg editor will just be the new default editor we have. But there's no way you disrupt the entire ecosystem for just an editor that we already have. And if we're changing how content is consumed, or, we, or how we consume content changes, and then we're changing how we're publishing content to match that consumption changes, it follows suit that search has to change as well. And that got me started thinking about search engine optimization and what this could look like as we're creating content going forward. Now, this is all pure speculation on my part. There is nothing in any of this that's even remotely, I think, been proven or tested in any which way, shape, or form. So initially, when everybody's saying, well, you should be calling this a theory, it's not a theory because there's not even anything that's been nearly tested. This is pure brain dump. And all of this came out of two things. That 10-year background plus in content marketing, 20 plus years of creating content, starting with Dreamweaver in 98. So, and all the SEO optimization, everything else I've done over the past decade. And everything was triggered by something that was stated by Morton Rand Hendrickson here last year during his talk on Gutenberg and the future of WordPress. My goal isn't to say that this is how search is going to change. It's just to give you a glimpse of something I can see changing as we move forward and what Gutenberg allows us to get in the future or how it opens things up for us in the future. So one thing is none of us are behind, or most people aren't behind Gutenberg because they don't see what they potentially gain from it, just they see all the problems it's causing. And one of the things, again, Matt stated last week that we didn't do a good job marketing. And I think that in most, most situations and circumstances, that if we have a reason to understand why things are being done, we're more likely to get behind something and deal with all the problems and work more cohesively to fix those problems. Mort stated almost 29 minutes in, a little more than 29 minutes in, so two thirds of the way through his talk, the web as a whole and WordPress is moving towards this idea that there's no such thing as a web page. And instantly my thought was web pages? SEO. Because everything we do with search optimization is at the page level. We use Yoast to optimize that page we've just created. Moz has their domain authority and their page authority. And if you're suddenly doing away with the foundation for which we optimize our content, what are we left with? What was that? 
But then how, how do the modules play into this? And that's exactly where my thought went, because he adds this three minutes later. Right? We're not going to be creating pages or posts. We're going to be creating blocks. And my light bulb went off. This is currently our regular editor. Right? This is the default if you're just playing. And this came off the 2018 Seattle WordCamp site because we don't have access to anything fancy. We can't use any page builders. This is what we get to start with. This is not difficult to use, generally. Maybe to make it look pretty, but I figured it out and I don't know what I'm doing. It's functional. Problem is, we create this page. And we toss in headings. We toss in a title. I know it's a little difficult to see, but for the basic, we put in subtitles, we put in content, we build all this out. We have now created our article or our page for our website. More specifically, an article in here. And then we go to Yoast, or whatever we're using, we try and make all the little dots turn green, which is a whole separate subject that they don't all need to be green. The other piece we look at when we're doing this our slug, our SEO title, our meta description, and we now have an optimized page. But we're not going to have pages. So how do we get any of this done for our content? And then it dawned on me, I said, what happens when we go here, and if anybody hasn't really played with it, this is just pure straight editor, just pulled out, we have your editor title, and there's a uh, tell your story which is a content block. And rather than adding and putting all our stuff in one little strip of block, because your main page now will be a single large block, we take every little piece and put it in its own block. And this is highlighted just so you can see the different blocks that were used to build a page. So it's the same exact layout that I had before. And of course, after I created the slide, I realized I probably should have something a little different. I would have probably taken where it says paste recipe and then ingredients and preparation are under it, and that would have been one large block. And then I would have taken the ingredients and the preparation and made them two separate blocks within that block. So the whole idea behind Gutenberg on the editing side of it is that we will have one base block, which is our content, the article, whatever we're publishing. And it will be created out of a series of blocks. And each of those blocks could be created out of a series of blocks. So now we have the ability to treat each individual layer of that article independently. So rather than optimizing this, we're going to optimize each one of those. What if we could actually apply all the things we're doing with Yoast to the page as we know it, and apply it to each of these blocks individually. What Gutenberg opens up is if we can do that, every single one of these blocks can now be indexed in Google. And if you go back to looking at things like mobile devices and virtual reality, if I'm sitting on my phone in the grocery store, trying to get my ingredients list for a recipe, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a search and I'm going to get an entire article, which is going to include the ingredients, the preparation, all these things. I don't need it. only thing I need is the ingredients. And I'm going to have to scroll through a search, look for it. And one of the gentlemen over at Bluehost turns around last week in Portland and says, yeah, I, do two, I have to basically do dual search. Search for the content and then search within the content for what I'm looking for. Google is already smart enough in it to know what devices are being used for search, down to the OS. Look at your Google Analytics, and it will tell you desktop versus mobile. It will tell you Safari, Chrome, Edge, Firefox, as the browser is being used. So Google knows what access the device is being used to access. Google also knows your location. They can easily pick up that you're in a grocery store on a mobile device 
You're not likely looking for the entire article, and for intent, it shows you just the ingredients. So now, rather than a search showing up this entire article that you have to scroll through, it simply pulls up the one ingredient block, which is all I need at that moment. And when we're talking about other devices like heads-up displays, you're not going to be able to scroll through anything. Content's going to be consumed differently. We have to make sure we publish it differently. And again, for me, the heart of Gutenberg gets into how content's being delivered. Whether that's really what was in the back of the minds in the first place, it's what I see going forward as a huge value for Gutenberg. And if you're searching a desktop, it gives me multiple options now. I can get this entire blog that I've written, my article, my page, and it shows up. But each of those additional blocks could show up as well. One article can show up three or four different ways in a search. And now, at the same point, we have what's showing in a search is much tied to our domain authority and how authoritative our content overall is. The one thing that Google did back, I don't know how long ago, is they had the rich snippets that would show up in listings, which could come from less authoritative sources because they directly answer the exact question. When was the last time you saw a rich snippet appear in a search? been a while. I can't remember the last time I've seen one. Which again means these little content blocks could be the replacement for rich snippets and Google's been testing it. And Gutenberg allows us to do that. So again, going back to the competitive piece in Wix and Weebly and everything else, we're doing an end around almost. Because if this is anything that comes to fruition, WordPress gives us a bit, much bigger advantage because now we're creating individual pieces of content. But this goes even beyond that now, and all the extra things that are starting to roll through my head in this. Hmm? Lego kits are huge. The best part about these is once you're done building this all nice fancy little thing, we can take all those little pieces, we can assemble those blocks, and build something different. As we add more kits to the collection, we get more blocks to use. The advantage in Gutenberg, and that's something that's already been talked about, is we have these reusable blocks. <coughs> that I can continue to create content using things I've already done. Just making content creation going forward a bit easier. So at that point, then it also came down to what happens within WordPress and optimizing all, how do we optimize these blocks more specifically? and how do we access these blocks. I haven't figured out yet how we're going to be able to access these additional blocks in not being on the code side. I had this thought about images that, are being, that we use in our sites. Right? We have a media library. What if we also had a content block library? Thinking long term, I had a way to piece all this together. You can create new blocks by uploading blocks. You can create new blocks as you're creating, as you're writing. And you can title each of those blocks. If I have this random thought and something that comes to mind that I want to write about, I can actually create the block ahead of time, even if I don't write the entire article and I don't have a slew of drafts staring me in the face going, you're lazy. Right? All the stuff I've ever gotten to now is obsolete. And now I have to figure out how to reuse any of those pieces or thoughts. We optimize all our images. Every image gets a URL, which means we have the ability to change the slug. We get a description, which really, as far as I'm concerned, becomes the meta description. We can add tags, we can add categories. We have a real way, just on the surface, as to what's already being done in WordPress to optimize content before we even look at something like Yoast. And every time I optimize an image, it's optimized still relative to the article, that the description does include either keywords or exactly what the image is about. It would be exactly what the content's about. Slug is very specific. Everything that I put in for titles 
Everything, by the way, if you're uploading an image on your website, make sure you actually name it exactly what it is, not image.123 or whatever it be. Funny story on that. Um, and it's only because I see this all the time. A, if you pin this image, once it's on your website, it sometimes will pull the image title, not just the description or the capture of what you're using. There was a very large company, big name, had an image about content theft, which had a picture of someone pulling an iPhone out of a woman's back pocket. And when I went to pin the image, it said phone in butt.jpg. <laughs> so if you're not, there's a little side tip for you is to make sure you have your images titled. But again, we have this capability to optimize images. You can do this with content blocks. And it makes it very easy to reuse because now I go into my article that I'm creating where we say add media, I can add block. And I can scroll through and find my blocks. And I had a discussion this morning that we're not just talking about HTML code for blocks, which is what I think is being, being talked about now. The entire content we write could be included in that block. So I can simply insert it and my next paragraph is done. And that creates one other major issue for me. This definition appears on multiple pages within my site, and so I'm not actually using it for an example. Because it appears on multiple pages, and I'm not just talking two, most of the time it appears now it's as an image. Because as small as it is, it is still technically duplicate content across my site. And while it's small enough not to necessarily trigger red flags, I have two, one page, one article that are effectively the same, taken from a slightly different angle, but enough that Google can see them as duplicate content. If what content is truly duplicated was just using these boxes, and those boxes have had their own URLs, and each of those own URLs have been indexed previously, I'm not duplicating content. The core body is duplicated, but Google could be smart enough to realize that it's made up of other pieces, and therefore it's a new article referencing the same content. Conversation always comes up on updating or rewriting old blog posts. Reasons going back and forth for multiples and which way you do this. But the big piece, I come up with articles just as an example. Um, always goes in my industry, the state of SEO in 2018. And we'll look at what happened in 2017 and reference that for 2018. We may look back to an article we wrote in 2016 saying the same thing. In 2016, I said this. In 2017, I said that. In 2018, I said this. But either you're constantly linking back and referencing the old articles, and every time I see constant hyperlinks, like constant hashtags and something as I'm reading, it gets annoying. I just have to put the content block in. If you want to read more, the content block is linked everywhere by PC. Or I don't have to link back because it already creates the internal backlink. And I can write these articles without the fear of duplicate content because I'm not actually duplicating the core content. I'm just reusing it. But then still even thinking about what Gutenberg can do for us in this, because we have this ability now, right? What if we added additional code into this? Infographics, embed codes. What if we can take our content blocks and allow them to be embedded in the content of others? that I have a way to create an article referencing other articles that are out there. And instead of embedding an infographic and embedding an image, I can embed paragraphs of content. Right? When we're writing articles and we're referencing others and we, do, we cut and paste into our article and then we link back to the original source, right? there are a number of times when those links go dead. Now we have dead links out there. There are a number of times we incorrectly put the link in there. 
There are times, sometimes, without realizing it, it gets forgotten. That's one thing on your end, but for whoever you're linking that content to, now has lost the backlink opportunity. It now looks like potential content theft if it's done on purpose. Allowing content to actually be embedded the same way we embed images, we eliminate that problem as well. So there's a potential huge advantage I can see going forward with Gutenberg. And it's just the tip of the iceberg for me. Everything on this is unknown. These are all just random thoughts, but I'm looking at this again from that whole content perspective. That this is a way for us to take advantage of how what we're writing will be consumed. <coughs> and the biggest piece for me at this point is even if all this is 100% wrong, for anybody who's creating content, think about each section of content, even if you're using a third party page builder. Right? We'll take a text block and then we'll put an image block and then we'll finish our thoughts in the next text block. The thought is to create those text blocks as if they were succinct thoughts, as if they could stand alone on their own. Because if this goes and those blocks translate over, your heads, you've already got a head start. And if they don't, quite honestly, your content will be more readable. And it's more likely to be indexed on how things are done now. Instead of having things split. Questions? So it sounds like at some point Google was really sorry. That's okay. Jumped ahead of the process. Um, so it sounds like what you're saying is at some point Google is really going to have to like understand these content blocks, right? And potentially. Like, they're, they're out there with structured data. We've been playing around with structured data, which essentially is kind of trying to do the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So it sounds like structured data might go by the wayside because of the volume that WordPress has in terms of the number of sites out there. And when Gutenberg is fully live, everybody starts using it, that Google might then start interpreting it and using it the way they've been using structured data. So you can see your content coming from cards and snippets and whatever else they might decide they want to, how they want to display it. I, mean, I, I think Morton's presentation, I might not be even hear, but I saw one where he was basically saying like a small business at some point may not even need to have a website, just structured data. Well, and that part of it goes to the core of, the, the core of this, is that you have a situation now where we have to be authoritative on our content within the site itself. We have to build up these huge sites, these authoritative sites, get all these backlinks in order to have a chance to show in the first place. Yet, when most of us are searching and moving towards this more natural search, and AI and voice search, people are asking questions. So we're pulling out our phones and going, how do I find my directions to this? Or I'm looking for this particular recipe for this. Or what are the ingredients for that recipe? Right? The idea behind Rich Snippets, at least as I understood it, was that you ask a question, you get an exact answer for what you want, and that's what pulls. And it shouldn't matter the source behind it. If I'm doing research for a larger article on my desktop, I'm more likely to be drawn from an authoritative source. So again, it does give the smaller brands a chance to show up and be found for specific pieces. It, it seems that you would have to be pretty uh, careful with your content then because as we already see going on, you can have something taken out of context. So if you have a block of something where you're, for instance, making an argument of some sort, and you're not finishing it or you know, within that block, then you, yeah, and, and yet it's that one block of content that could go out around the world then. I mean, do you see that as an issue? It is, and it really gets down to the, the, the other main piece for us is that we have, Content creation is its own little art form. And half the content out there is, in my opinion, horrible. And it's not necessarily by default. Some of us just aren't good writers. And the rest of it is we just don't know how to put things and edit them properly. So we end up with this disjointed piece. It does require better editing at this point. It does require better writing. It does require better content. And in the end, even with what we have now, if nothing else changed in the way search goes, Better content is going to rank better. 
So again, that goes to the piece that I want you more thinking that just exactly where you hit the head on the head is that we have to think even now how we're writing and keeping thoughts to be these standalone pieces that just this showed up. And the other thing is, is that we don't necessarily have to index, in my opinion, every single block. I only have to index some blocks. By default, in a site map, everything that's within there, we have a choice exclude, include kind of thing with Yoast. All the blocks would automatically be included, but we can no index certain blocks, or blocks could be no index by default, and we just say which ones we want to index. So I can have a heading block has no reason to be indexed. But yeah, it really does mean we have to pay better attention to our content, which I think in the end, what we should be doing anyway. And Gutenberg just forces the issue, even better. Follow up to her question. Um, so, I mean, I've talked to you about this a lot. You know, I talk about this. But every paragraph is a block. So if we want to keep the context as writers, do you recommend longer paragraphs? Length of content in general. How long should you write? How much? Enough to get the point across with an answer and, and actually do it justice. If it takes you 300 words, write a 300 word blog post and I don't care if it ranks or not. If it takes 6,000 words to get your point across, write 6,000 words. But each thought within that process has to be blocked together. So if your thought's going to span three and four or five paragraphs, it may be one long block of text instead of three or four individual blocks. If I have two distinct thoughts that make up a piece, so I'm talking about why Gutenberg might be one block, its impact might be the second block, and I don't care if only two blocks make up the entire main content block. If I have a recipe piece where I have three and four or five, six different blocks, they'll be built that way. So how we structure the content once it's been written goes into making sure it's taken in context, and it's a complete block. Anybody else? It's either really good or I just confused you all. <laughs> I said I'd be here all day, but they're going to kick me off the stage at some point. So I agree with your, your foresight. I mean, it sounds logical to me, but I'm also getting a picture of real nasty SCRPs until Google and the others get a handle on it. Yeah. Oh, without question, it's going to be nasty. I mean, and some stuff will fall out of rank, some stuff will fall in rank, but again, and, and on some level, stuff has been played with all along anyway by Google. I mean, the structured data piece of it, and then we have rich snippets, and then we have this move to longer meta descriptions, and we've gone back to shorter meta descriptions. When I get to the point, I was writing, you know, 155 characters for your meta description, and suddenly Yoast says it's 240 or some odd, and then I go, next time I go back in after a Yoast update, I'm like, wait a minute, what? And now it feels like it's only 100 characters. And even what content is showing when you do share content to Facebook, it used to pull the full meta description of 155 characters. Now, it might get 70. So I, I, I keep seeing all these little pieces and the shift to mobile and mobile responsiveness. And Anthony, all of this is Google playing with different pieces to see what works. And Google, I think, is far more forward looking in that because we consume content differently, they already know we have to show it differently. Which again, that logic piece, which I appreciate you seeing, is that somebody on the back end has to say, well, we're missing a piece in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping it, that this is where Gutenberg goes. Whatever it's broken, or I had the comment about, well, that's not how blocks are actually being set up to be used within Gutenberg. It's too tight on the back end that can't stand alone, but maybe that's just the first step of this, and we've got to get it working, and then we can figure out how we separate them out. Because we need to be able to separate these blocks out that I can write an article, which is a block, and I can have four distinct points, each of which is a block, and I can have three distinct points in each one of those blocks, which makes up that block, so now I've got 12, 4, and the 1, and everything else there potentially is optimizable. Which can be uh, double edged sword. It can. So again, it goes to what can, what should be optimized and not on our end, but also Google sorting out now really what pieces have value. So we'll get an algorithm based somewhat on that. It was one of the questions that came up previously when I was talking about this was that we got to get away from this notion of how long or what an article is. 
300 words is what they use from a ranking piece now. That has to go away. And I somehow think that has to be antiquated anyway. Because the point originally, and people are asking why at least 300 words, because if it's less than 300 words, the likelihood is it really can't be that authoritative. Unless you're only looking for something that can be answered in 100 words. Right? And when we're pulling something from a mobile device, just want the 100 words I need. I don't want to shift through a 3,000 word paragraph or post to find it. Especially when I'm looking <coughs> up to confirm something I'm posting on social media and suddenly, oh, i got to look that up and I can't find it now. You know, I can pull up my desktop and trade it. So, but with the algorithm always shifting, it's, but yes, it's going to get messy. It's messy on Gutenberg's end, it's going to be messy on Gutenberg's end, the whole thing's just a mess. Anything else? Appreciate it. Thank you.